Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, as a lot of you guys probably already know, uh, Swift 3.1 was recently released by the Apple team to you know a lot of the iOS developers in the community as well as Mac OS developers. So what does this really mean? Well, because Swift 3.1 is considered a minor release, uh, all of your old Swift 3.0 code, you can still compile without too many issues. And so in today's video, I wanted to go over the more interesting parts of Swift 3.1 by just going through a couple of examples right now. All right, so for all of you guys that are really curious about the new additions to the Swift language in 3.1, uh, you guys can head over to the raywonderlick.com website. And at this URL, you can find all of the changes related to the language and the introduction of 3.1. And uh, you know, a lot of new changes in here. The one I find most interesting is down here called nested generics. And there's an example here, but uh, I have prepared an example back there uh, using the stack implementation. And I'll go over that in just a bit. Uh, scrolling down a little bit more, we also have something else that's kind of interesting to me at least, and it is the availability by a Swift version, kind of if check syntax that looks kind of like that. So I'm gonna go over that in just a little bit as well. So moving on to playgrounds back here, uh, the Xcode version that I'm using is uh, 8.3 8E162, and I downloaded this off of the Apple's developer website. And uh, down here, what do we have? Well, this is an implementation of a stack, and I kind of went over this in a past video in one of those algorithm videos. And here we have a struct, and then we have a stack item class up here that allows us to kind of keep track of what is on top of our stack. And in addition to that, we have pop and push that allows us to push these items onto the stack. And down here we have an integer stack, pushing one and pushing two on it, and then popping it gives us the two, another pop gives us the one, and then the final pop gives us the nil. So this is a pretty basic implementation of a stack, right? And the one weird thing about this implementation is that we have this like stack item class that also takes in a generic of a different kind out here compared to the stack that also takes in a generic of type T. So the way that this is typed out, uh, it looks like these are the same generics of type T, but it could potentially, potentially be different once you declare the object and give it a concrete type. So this is the clumsy part about this implementation. And because uh, Swift 3.0 and Xcode 8.2 didn't allow for nested generics, we kind of had to implement it this way. Now with the introduction of uh, nested generics, what I can do is to kind of copy this up here and just comment it out for now. So that's obviously going to give us a compiler error. And what I'm going to do is to paste all of that code directly inside of this struct itself. And that's going to hopefully fix the errors that I had. And uh, now everything is okay again. So what does this really mean is that the generic for the stack item that keeps track of what is on top of the stack, this generic is now T and it is the exact same generic that the outer class kind of has for stack right uh, like that. And uh, the advantage of this is that whenever you declare your stack objects now, uh, you don't have to worry about the differing generics. It's always going to be the same one, which is int or string or float or whatever you need it to be. And uh, on top of all this, we have the ability to remove these generics now. So it'll be a lot cleaner if I remove this declaration of that T as well as this T right here. And uh, this we can also move out. And then finally, this will allow me to kind of run the same program, uh, hopefully. And there we go. Everything is all good and no more compiler errors. So that's uh, the improvement that we have inside of our code using nested generics. Uh, the other example I wanna go over is the availability check, which allows us to do some fancy things. So that syntax, let me just put it over here so I can see it. You kind of write it out like this right here. You can just say, let me get some spacing over here. You can say pound if, and then you just say swift, if it's say swift, is greater than or equals to 3.1, you're 
you can declare some kind of function like uh, int version is the array winner like example and just give it a number of double perhaps and then this they want to actually uh, convert it into some kind of number and the example gives you some kind of int constructor with this exactly thing and I'll tell you what exactly it means in just a bit I'll feed it in the uh, the number from this function like that and if you are not uh, this Swift version. You can also check for Swift greater or equal to 3.0. And if you are in like, for, for example, Swift 3.0, you can declare another different function, which is the exact same name. That takes in a double as well. And this guy, we can just return an int instead of the optional up here. And the reason why we do that is because in Swift 3.0, you don't have this exactly call. Uh, all you have is this int and number that you feed in like that. And then finally, you just end the uh, entire uh, the construct of this if checking like that. So what does this really mean? Well, first you kind of have to take a look at this exactly guy. And uh, exactly was introduced inside of uh, Swift 3.1 as well. And if you go back to the website, they kind of tell you what exactly does. And they cover it under this top section right here where it says, failable numeric conversion initializers. So basically, if this number right here that you feed it into this function, if it doesn't convert to the value that you would expect it to convert, uh, it'll give you a nil uh, return value. So this creates a int whose value is value if no rounded is necessary, uh, nil otherwise. So this check kind of uh, allows you to declare different functions uh, depending on which Swift version you are on. And it's very similar to, you know, checking for the OS version 10.3 or 10.2. And it's very helpful if you have this uh, in your code. All right, so these are the parts that I found to be a little bit more interesting inside of the Swift 3.1 language. Uh, let me know your thoughts and let me know if Swift 3.1 has caused you any issues uh, in your development life cycle. And also, if you're interested in downloading the code for today's stack implementation, you can find a link down in the description below. And in the next video, I want to talk about some of the issues that I've been running into uh, using Xcode 8.3 along with the Firebase SDKs. So make sure to stay tuned for that by subscribing to the channel. Uh, that is it for me. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye, guys.